<clears throat> Hello, today I'm looking at Majma car number 54, which is called the Potalia Sutta, and it's translated as meaning to Potalia. The location is Apana, in the country of the Anguta Vapans, or Anguta Ratans, Rapans. And the people involved are Buddha and Potalia, who is a householder but believes himself to be a renunciant. renunciant. So Buddha, after his arms round, is seated at the root of a tree when Potalia, uh, the householder, comes across him and exchanges greetings. Buddha invites the householder to sit, to sit with him but Potalia is annoyed that Buddha, Buddha has addressed him as a householder. So in fact, Buddha's invited Potalia, the householder, to sit down three times by saying, welcome, householder, sit down. Potalia, Potalia remarks upon this to Buddha um, about how he's annoyed about being called a householder. Uh, Buddha replies, but you have the makes and signs of a householder. You're well dressed, uh, you carry a parasol, you're wearing sandals. Uh, Buddha responds, but Buddha, Potalia says, I have given up all my works and cut off all my affairs. How so? asked Buddha. I have given all my wealth to my children, replies Potalia. I do not advise or chastise them, merely live on food. That is how I have given up all my works and cut off all my affairs. Householder, Buddha replies, cutting off affairs, as you describe it, is one thing, but in the noble one's discipline, the cutting off of affairs is different. So, what is the cutting off of affairs in the noble one's discipline? Tell me about the Dhamma, says Pitalaya. Potalaya, sorry. There are eight things in the Noble One's discipline that lead to the cutting off of affairs. By means of the non-killing of living beings, the killing of living beings is to be abandoned. By means of taking only what is given, the taking of what is not given is to be abandoned. By means of truthful speech, false speech is to be abandoned. By means of unmalicious speech, malicious speech is to be abandoned. By means of no rapaciousness or greed, rapaciousness and greed are to be abandoned. By means of no spite, spite or scolding, spite and scolding are to be abandoned. By means of no anger or irritation, anger and irritation are to be abandoned. By means of non-arrogance, Arrogance is to be abandoned. These are the eight things, in brief, that lead to the cutting off of affairs in the Noble One's discipline. Potalia then asks for an explanation in detail. So, in turn, Buddha explains in more detail the eight things that, with practice, lead to the cutting off of the fetters and defilements. He starts with non-killing. A noble follower considers it, considers it thus. If I were to kill, I would blame myself. The wise, having investigated, would censure me for doing so, and after death, because of my action, I would end up in an unhappy destination. So while taints, vexations and fever might arise through killing living beings, there are no taints, vexation or fever for one who abstains from killing living beings. So this logical explanation is then repeated for the other seven, seven items that Buddha mentioned. Buddha concludes by saying, these eight things that lead to the cutting off of, of affairs in the Noble One's discipline have now been expounded in detail. But the cutting off of affairs in the Noble One's discipline has not yet been achieved entirely and in all ways. So, Potalia asks, how is it achieved in all ways? Buddha then says, suppose a dog overcome by weakness and hunger was waiting outside a butcher's shop. 
The butcher then throws a well-cleaned meatless skeleton of bones smeared with blood to the dog. Would the dog get rid of his hunger and weakness by gnawing on such a well-hacked and clean skeleton of meatless bones? He would not. Eventually the dog would reap weariness and disappointment. A noble follower considers thus. Sense pleasures have been compared to a skeleton of bones by the Blessed One. The sense pleasures give much suffering and despair, whilst the danger in them is great. So the commentary suggests that the equanimity, um, so that is the blooded bones look tasty and succulent like, sense, like the sense pleasures, but once gnawed or experienced, they provide no sustenance. The sense pleasures give much suffering and despair and the danger in them is great. Having realised this with proper wisdom, a noble follower avoids the equanimity that is diversified and develops the equanimity that is unified based on unity, says Buddha. So the commentary suggests that the equanimity that is unified based on unity is the fourth jhana, which is defined as a meditative state with a feeling of equanimity, neither pleasure nor pain, and unconcern due to serenity of awareness, unification of mind, contact, feeling, perception, intention, consciousness, desire, decision, persistence, mindfulness, equanimity and attention, as, as, as um, outlined in Majmakaya number 111. Buddha continues with another analogy about a carrion bird seizing a piece of meat and then this bird is pursued by other carrion bird and poses the question to Potalia. If the carrion bird does not quickly release that piece of meat, wouldn't it incur death or deadly suffering? Yes, it would, says Potalia. So, says Buddha, sensual pleasure has been compared to a piece of meat by the Blessed One. They provide much suffering and despair whilst the danger in them is great. Buddha then repeats the homily about seeing this as it actually is with proper wisdom. And so clinging to material things of this world utterly ceases without remainder. Buddha continues, suppose a man has a blazing grass torch and holds it against the wind. If the man did not quickly let go of it, wouldn't his hand and arm be burnt so that he might... Uh, incur death or deadly suffering? Yes, venerable sir, replies Potalia. So, says Buddha, sensual pleasures have been compared to a blazing grass torch. They provide much suffering and despair. Having seen this as it actually is with proper wisdom, he avoids the equanimity that is diversified based on diversity and develops the equanimity that is unified based on unity. Where clinging to material things of the world utterly ceases without remainder. Buddha then continues comparing sense pleasures like being dragged into a hot, glowing charcoal pit, or like dreaming of lovely parks and groves, meadows and lakes, but upon waking, seeing nothing of it, or like a man who borrows a handsome carriage and fine jewelled earrings how he would be envied and admired in the marketplace. But then the owners of the carriage and earrings take back their possessions, leaving the man dejected. Or suppose there was a tree with ripe fruit, but none of the fruit had fallen to the ground. A man wanders up seeking fruit, but seeing none has fallen to the ground, he climbs to the tree so he can fill his bag with fruit. Then a second man comes along also seeking fruit, and he too sees that none has fallen to the ground. But this second man does not know how to climb trees. So to fill his bag with fruit, he cuts the tree down at its base. So, Buddha says to Potalia, the householder, if the first man who climbed the tree doesn't come down quickly, when the tree falls, wouldn't he break his hand or his foot or some other part of his body? Yes, venerable sir, replies Potalia. So Buddha responds, a noble follower considers thus, sense pleasures have been compared to fruits on a tree by the Blessed One. They provide much suffering and despair, whilst the danger in them is great. 
Having seen this, thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, he avoids the equanimity that is diversified based on diversity and develops the equanimity that is unified based on unity. Where clinging to the material things of the world utterly ceases the remainder. So just to run through the analogies that Buddha mentions, there's the dog and the meatless bone, the vulture and the piece of meat, the man and the blazing grass torch, the man and the charcoal pit, the man and the beautiful dream, the man and the borrowed jewellery, and the man and the chopped down fruit tree. Now these similes also get a mention in um, Majmakar number 22, which is also dealing with a person whose um, beliefs are wrong in the uh, Buddhist system of thinking. And in that, in the Majmakar number 22, it's a monk called Arita who has doubts about uh, the Dhamma. And also imagine the Majmakar number 22, there's three other similes mentioned, the butcher's knife and block, the simile of the sword and st the sword stake, and the simile of the snake's head. Um, so to continue, based upon that same supreme mindfulness whose purity is due to equanimity, this noble follower recollects his many past lives, as his Buddha speaking. He sees beings pass away and reappear and understands how being, beings pass on according to their action. He realises for himself with direct knowledge and enters upon and abides in the deliverance of mind and deliverance by wisdom that are taintless with the destruction of the taints. At this point, householder, Buddha says to Potalia, the cutting off of affairs has been achieved entirely and, un and in all ways. What do you think, householder? Do you see in yourself any cutting of, of affairs like this? No, replies Potalia. We imagined wanderers of other sects are well trained and knowledgeable, and we treated them thus. Whereas your followers, we did not believe to be well trained or knowledgeable. But now we see that is wrong. It is your followers who are well trained and knowledgeable. We will treat them as such. The Blessed One has inspired in me love for recluses, confidence in recluses, reverence for recluses. Master Gautama has made the Dhamma clear in many ways, revealing what was hidden. I go to Master Gautama for refuge and to the Dhamma and to the Sangha. From today, let Master Gautama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge for life. And that's the end of Majmakaya number 54. Thanks for watching.